The Celtics Talk Podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. What's up, everybody? Post game pod coming to you after the Celtics fall to the Miami Heat. 111, 101. TD Garden, game two, series tied 1 1. Abigail Chen. I was waiting for a pause and I never got one. No, I know. I wasn't going to give you one. Um, Everybody losing tonight. O- only person giving people space was the Boston Celtics on Miami <laughs> Heat three point shooters. Am I right? <laughs> See what you did there. What the hell happened tonight? Oh, I'm Abby Chin, by the way. I just said Abigail Chin. I feel like. <laughs> um, wait, like people, oh, people tuning in for the first time are like, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> we have name identifiers in front of us. What? Uh, I don't know. I, like, you needed to identify me. I needed someone to identify the Boston Celtics because they did not look like the team that we watched for 82 regular season games. I mean, they were. Make the it make sense. That hunts matchups, but they did not do it within the free flow of their offense. They were a team that has played defense in the past, but they didn't look like the one tonight. So, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Why is it that the Miami Heat make the Boston Celtics lose their mind? I mean, that stat about the fact that the Miami Heat have shot 50% only four times against a team in the playoffs, and all four of those have come against the Boston Celtics. In the last Why is it that Caleb Martin or Gabe Vincent or whoever it is looks like the freaking Splash Brothers out there (laughs) against this Celtics defense that was the number two rated defense in the NBA all season long. Oh, you're making me feel so much better. It's so hard because sometimes when I'm, I'm, because normally I'm screaming at the camera and no one else is mad with me. And like, it's nice to have a little bit of of anger. And so look, it's very- I wouldn't call it anger. I have some fire, maybe a little vitriol. I'm not actually angry. Like, are you concerned? What is your level of concern right now? So I'm not going like full-blown panic meter. I still think the Celtics win this series, but they play like this long-term against like a team that's healthy and that isn't an eight seed. For those who are listening on the audio version, that was me, that was me making. It wasn't last year. I don't think we can 100%. Very classify them that. But, and we'll talk about game three later, but you've just given a whole bunch of role players, a whole bunch of confidence going back to Miami. Lord knows Terry Rozier is going to dust himself off in a few days and be ready to go at some point down there because there's nine days between these games. You got Jimmy Butler on social media making fun of you. insane. That was ridiculous. I, at first, because I was scrolling on my phone waiting for Jason mm. Tatum, as I usually do, mm. and I saw that picture and I was like, who did this? What is this? What's happening? And it then was I, Jimmy. And then I, yeah, I saw that it was Jimmy Butler himself. So, so it, it, on the off chance that you are listening or watching this podcast and you didn't see it, hopefully it, the picture will pop up in front of you. Uh, it is, uh, essentially, they took a Sports Center post from last year. No, where Jimmy Jaylen Butler Brown, did. Right. Well, that Jalen Brown did. That, that Quote the Jalen Brown that said, don't let us win one. Jimmy Butler photoshopped himself on Jalen Brown with the same cut line and then had a whimsical caption about feeling cute, might delete later. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> well, no, I ain't psych. deleting that. Yeah, psych. Uh, but how, I will say that the post loses a little meaning because Jalen said that after they lost three straight to Miami. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So that's for the record. It doesn't make also, me, didn't you, make me feel any better, I'll tell you that much. Terry Rozier, Jimmy Butler. I mean, really no signs that he will come back in this series unless, like what, you said, it, it is going to take it about nine you? more days. Freaking zombies, heat, they just, like, show up. And they get to go back down to Miami where, you know. Feel a lot better. They got their stuff. Some of us don't get to go to Miami, so we don't even have a little silver lining here. So, um. Oh. Is that a knock at me? Yeah, it pretty much Now is. you're blaming me for this. Yeah, I'm just mad at everybody. <laughs> um, mostly Joe Missoula. <laughs> So, like, look, okay. if we're going to sit here and, yeah. and talk about all the good things Joe does throughout the course of the year, we have to be on the flip side of it. Uh, it's not completely on him that they were not closing out the shooters. Uh, if you go back and watch the tape, which we did in Post Game Live, uh, they were not crisp. They were not fast. It's on the players being a half step slow. Do you slow. agree that almost every shot was contested? No. God, watch them. They were, that, I can't wait to see the data. You talked about the data from the other night. I cannot wait to see what the NBA's, how close the defenders were. My guess is, again, having watched probably half the three-pointers so far that everything will be judged as open two to four feet some will be six plus feet and very few will be zero to two feet my you're closer than me what do you think is how does this happen when eric spolstra told you following their practice that this was exactly what their game plan was going to be and i know that you don't want to overreact and and that was a question post game is that after miami shoots 
56% from three, do you overreact to that? Mm -hmm. I mean, the answer is you have to react an appropriate amount. <laughs> am, am I, <laughs> and, am and I maybe reacting? Try in? to contest more shots, regardless of who's shooting the ball. I think if you rewound the tape to last year, we'd be like, oh, they shot 50%. They're never going to do that again. And then they did it twice more. So yeah. um, while I am not as concerned as last season because of the personnel, because of the talent discrepancy, there's enough things in this game that gnaw at me, and chief among them is the fact that we knew exactly how the Miami Heat were going to play in this game, and yet the Celtics, for whatever reason, seemed jarred by it. How much did we hear them talk in the last few days about physicality? Bring in the fight. Bring in the fight to them. We're going to punch first. And what happened? They got pushed around. Kristaps Porzingis, completely uncomfortable throughout this game, started missing a few bunnies early, never seemed like... He got his mind back into it. Drew Holiday misses a couple shots, never kind of found a rhythm. Derek White tried to will you in the fourth quarter, but you know, even on a night where the Jays were fantastic, large by and large, Celtics just were not ready for what the method of attack was. They were too slow moving the ball up and down the court. The pace was terrible. I do feel like Jason played a different game, and that was part of what Scal was talking about throughout the broadcast was just the hunting mismatches. It felt like Jason called his own number a lot more than he did in game one. Ten assists in game one. Because he didn't send two. doubles. But his job is to make the basketball play. He did. Every time? Not, I mean, well, I'll have to go back and watch. But I do think more often than not, him and Jalen made sound basketball decisions. I think what problem to me was that they too often got hung up wanting to hunt the mismatch. Where That's it was what like, I'm saying. And not early on. The Right. It took forever Following to get Following game sets. one, yes. Christoph Sporzingis talked about how beautiful the game that Jason Tatum played. And while mm -hmm. you do have to adjust to what Miami's defense is doing, the fact that he did that early on got everyone else involved, got everyone else on his team going. And then it wasn't even a game in the end. And so, to me, it just felt like this, while they were hunting mismatches, it felt like that's what was stagnating their defense, their offense, mm -hmm. excuse me. And then, and then if you can't get a single stop me. and can't get out in transition coming back. Why couldn't they get stops? I mean, besides, like, again, okay, the 23 threes, 24 threes, what did I even get the number is? 23. And um, infuriating. But, like, then whenever they weren't making threes, Bam was going to work on Al, on, on Porzingis. Like, what, why, why, why couldn't the defense get any stops? But then are you overshifting to the shooters at that point, and that opens up the middle. That's the reaction to the adjustment. KP's worst game as a Celtic? I mean... I'm not even sure they second place. I don't remember place. a yeah. worse one this season. It was not good. What did the guys on Post Game Live, how did they explain the Kristaps game? You'll hear some of this, but uh, I, for the segment that I was present for, we I, we just chalked it up to, like, look, he, felt, he looked uncomfortable. for he Again, and some of that, I don't think necessarily, like, initially it was he was uncomfortable. I think some of that was missed some, like, really easy shots, like some bunnies that he made the other night. Mm -hmm. But same deal, I think when, you're, when your mind is saying, like, I got to take advantage of this matchup, you're like, taking shots that maybe you, you don't always want to take and he just missed airball the three at one point I know that was late clock but just, just didn't have it and, well, there's gonna, and there's gonna be nights like that in his defense I will say Miami undercut him I liked it when you were more angry. more than once and were with, actually whistled for the foul on those plays mm. because it was so obvious I mean that I know that the plan is to be physical with KP but when you have guys just like gnawing at your knees for 48 minutes. You know what you do? You go like, boom, you score over the top of them. I mean, it's so, that's very hard. You have small children. Do you know how hard oh God, it is? I put them in the post. those things away? Those guys Mouse away. in the house, and then I give them the two small after I break a three. Um, so, well, then I guess that requires the spacing that everyone keeps talking about. Fighting for your there. spacing so that you do have space to maneuver and get people off your knees are and you, ankles. Bigger picture, are you worried about Kristaps long term I am not no okay Kristaps dominated this regular season he is it was the series against the heat last year mm -hmm. that him? made Brad Stevens in that front office want to go out and get Kristaps so I think he will figure it out I think the coaching staff will figure it out and I am overall while I have come off as a little bit anxious mm. I'm not concerned we should have one. I should have had you bring your one water game. bottle out here with yeah. uh, the perfect message says chill chill everybody chill and it's blue did you pick your water bottle based on your outfit no i actually uh one of my good friends from mabel's preschool class oh that yeah cambridge uncommon if anybody is looking i was gonna for say nice of you to promote uncommon it by goods bringing it on here um 
anywhere that they were not great in crunch time. Got it down to six, and then all of a sudden, I think there was a miscommunication. My guy, Derek, who I will always sing his praises, seemed to get lost on a switch and or like decided to stay and no one rotated. Open three-pointer, I think, for Caleb Martin at that point, who, again, man, they booed him every time he touched the ball, but he was he pretty good. He got the Kyrie treatment. <laughs> he was pretty and, good and tonight. And he knocked down his shot. Boy, do I know about giving people the Kyrie treatment. Um, and then, like, Tyler Hero goes to the back. Tyler Hero was really good in this game. 14 assists. Wow. I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Tyler Hero was a hero he can for wear, the Heat tonight. He can wear any ridiculous outfit he wants after a night like that. I think he doesn't need our approval to wear those ridiculous outfits because mm. he does that every night. They like, are ridiculous. I would like to see what it was tonight. It was um, pink. You didn't see it like a pink T-shirt? Nope, I didn't see it. I was too busy, thro- I was too busy throwing things. Um Anything else how, you want to talk about? Yes. How sustainable is that performance from Miami? And while I know that they play really well against the Celtics, this is not the Miami. That's not the way they want to play. That's not the way they played this season. You sure you want this on tape? Because I'm, I'm sure I sat here I'm, last year. Going, I, just, after game I asked one, I'm the like, question. Oh, how sustainable Miami is Heat. They don't have to worry about that. They're not going to shoot 50% again. And then they did it three times. So, uh, you know, am I? do I think they're going to do it again? No. But you never know. They at least I, what, I, what I think what concerns me is Eric Spolstra, who, by the way, the Celtics now have to deal with until 2032, eight-year contract, $120 million, I think it is. Pretty good coach, knew what bu- buttons to push, knew what, like, the scheme had to be flipped, kind of told you what was coming. Wasn't so, afraid to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> which is pretty awesome, too. Like, yeah. when you can, you're not going to hide it. Like, you're not going to hide your starters. Maybe. You just go out there and do your thing. And so now it's on Joe. So I think Joe's had a really good year. I think this feels like a little bit of an outlier in terms of not making adjustments and not being able to kind of figure it out on the fly. But we got to see it. So game three down there. I like the way you said it. The Celtics need to respond, and we're going to see how they do that. Are you confident the Celtics three. will respond? I am very, very confident that the Celtics you, will you respond changed. here. You changed. You came out here mad like me, and then you just, you just left me in a ditch. I can't throw away 82 games of data. I mean... There were some outliers in there. A couple outliers 82 in there. games of data to then just lose all faith in this group that was dominant in the regular season. Let's end on this. Wait, wait. I just want to let you know, we talked about it on Post Up. I saw Pat Riley again tonight. His hair was on point, as always. And, yes, Alonzo Mourning was just a few steps behind. Always. Always. He's like his, his personal security detail. It's a nice one to have. I mean, good on Pat Riley for being here. I don't know what trip, he gave him, gave, him, gave, him, gave him a pep talk or whatever. Do you think it's because Danny's gone? <laughs> There's always Austin he can yell at. That's true. <laughs> There's always an Ainge family member he can yell at. Um, can I give you my one positive spin? And then yes. I'm going to get to my last thing. Um, we get an extra Gorman game. That's so true. In the garden. In TD Garden. Someone asked me, like, did Gordon talk about... Did Gordon... Did Gorman Hayward. talk about... <laughs> what time is it? Uh... <laughs> Did Gorman talk about the fact that this could be his last home yeah. game? And he didn't throughout the broadcast, and now I'm glad that he didn't. Right. So that actually worked out. But I do want to I, – I was concerned about – I noticed that crunch time in the fourth. I was I was not oh, – yeah. I was excited for the Celtics to have the opportunity mm-hmm. to overcome some of those issues. Okay. So now Gore- we get to see them do that. And, and like you said, hi, number one, I have two things. Joe Mazzulla keeps telling us to go into things as Barry is sticking his tongue out. Uh, um, I can't remember. Joe Mazzulla continues to say, you can't go into things with expectations. Any of these playoff series, anything can happen. So you have to expect the the Heat to win a game. Uh, Expect the unexpected. Exactly. Uh, And then number two, like you said, the 2008 team. Yeah. And I, I know that we're... We can't. We shouldn't draw too many parallels, but they did have to get smacked in the mouth a couple of times by the Atlanta Hawks before they figured it out. Kevin Garnett was really good at responding. We'll find out if Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and all the new guys that are here are ready to do the same. Uh, let's end on this, which I tried to start ending on four minutes Sorry, ago. My bad. Uh, no, but that's okay. I enjoyed it. Um, no, I meant for Barry. If, Sorry, uh, Barry. For those who listen to podcast one of the postseason pod, um, who won the Bake Off? I did. That's right. It was a smackdown. Mabel had to withdraw. So, yes, I won by default. Thank you. Uh, for those uninitiated, they had a cupcake baking contest. And she uh, is I taking a victory lap about destroying your... How old is she? 
She's eight. <laughs> She's never made cupcakes alone in her life. Do you want to tell what the people what you did? How you sabotaged her? I didn't sabotage her. <laughs> totally sabotaged her. I did not her. sabotage her. She withheld sugar so that the cupcakes came out terrible. Mabel forgot to add sugar to her cupcakes. I don't know why I can, I, can't I'm being held responsible for this. She wrote it on her recipe. I completed my recipe. They were way underbaked. My son couldn't even eat one, but I eat a whole one. He like spat it out. He was like, this is, this is horrible, mom. But I won because Mabel could not complete the challenge. Mabel couldn't make adjustments, just like the Boston Celtics. She made too many adjustments. Too many Wrong adjustments. Uh, here's more from our postgame talk. <laughs> Look no further than the award-winning 24 Auto Group. With over 2,600 vehicles in stock, the brands you love, backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24autogroup.com. I thought we were just a lot, really stagnant offensively. Real, I mean, that was the key to the game. I mean, if, minus to us not getting out in shooters and not respecting the Miami Heat as shooters as they hit. So think about it. We gave up a franchise record for threes, fourth most in NBA history, and two starters out. You're talking about rookies and second-year players, guys with no experience, and they make 23 threes against us. That's one side of it. The offensive side of it to me was exactly what you just said. We're hunting out matchups. Why? Why? Every, there is a matchup. Everywhere you look, there's a matchup. You just drive the ball, create rotation. But the way we're doing it is throw the ball inside, dribble, dribble, dribble. You think the Miami Heat aren't going to be ready for that? They're ready for that. Spolster's ready for that. And they were allowed to be more physical, more handsy because it's the playoffs. So I don't understand why we went to that. I just don't. I think we should have went to more of a driving kick game, use our skill set, which is space and shooting, and all of a sudden we just threw that away. Well, I think it was a byproduct of our defense. We weren't playing any defense and a lot of times this year when we talk, when we see the, the Celtics lose games this year, right, they didn't lose many in the regular season, but when they did it was a byproduct of them not being engaged defensively. Uh, I felt like from the gate they was like a step slow. You t remember you said, don't come out half-stepping, right? Yeah. I felt like that's how they came out. They came, That was the definition of half-stepping, like you're a half count, count late. Now I come at it looked like I contested the shot, but you know, a late contest is no contest. Yeah. And that's uh, to, to me, that's really where everything stemmed from. From not having good defensive possessions leads to us not having good offensive possessions. Thirty threes in in basically five quarters. That's that's unacceptable. If like we're if we're trying to win, like we know this is a three point shooting league, and we're just going out there. How many more threes do they have to hit before we finally like flip a switch and say I'm not giving up no more threes? And that. To, very disappointing to say that they never made I don't want to say an adjustment they didn't, it wasn't that, it's like coming out and just not contesting Urgency. a guy, why would you do that when a team has already hit 13 14, 15, 16 threes at what point do you say alright they're making them tonight? I think at the beginning of the game we did not have the sense of urgency that I believe that you have to have in a playoff game we know that that's a desperate team, Miami Heat was a desperate team coming in, they desperately need, needed to win this game to have any shot of winning the series or having any shot of having sure. any confidence to win this series. And I just don't think that our level um, – of effort. I don't think that our attention to detail was there for whatever reason. Everything seemed like a count late. The pass, a half second late. Not on time. It was on target, but it was just a little bit late. Yeah. I just felt like they, it, it, they were just off. Like it, And you, you just can't have off nights in the playoffs. I'm sorry, not everybody. And, yep. and the two stars did not have night, uh, off nights. It was everybody else. Joe, they were 13 for 24 from three at halftime. We've talked this season about adjusting to when it's just an aberration, when it's just one of those nights. Did you feel like you adjusted in the second half? Because they, I think they made another 53% of their threes in the second half. And what could you have done differently? Because that basically that was their whole strategy. Everybody knew it, that they were going to have to take a barrage of threes to keep up with you guys. Yeah, well, so that, that, to answer your question, that when, when things like that are happening, it puts more pressure on your offense. Your offense has to be more efficient. Your offense has to be more effective. And you have to look at the other side of the adjustment. And so uh, the hero out of bio pick and roll is dangerous in itself. And you start going to switching or you start, uh, you know, inching out to those guys and not having shifts. And then you're, you're, you're making that a two-on-two -two game with their two best players. 
Um, and so the, the first adjustment was to try to become more efficient on the offensive end. And, um, you know, we were able to do that in some stretches. I um, mean, it was, what, like a six to eight point game. And so it was, it was a two, three possession game. So with the team shooting 55% from three and you shooting 37%, you getting more shots than them and getting outshot by 11 for it to be a two possession game for the majority of the uh, fourth quarter, I think is, you know, you're looking to just be more efficient on the offensive end. Uh, mm -hmm. Once we got it down to like eight to ten, then they went to uh, the post ups or the out of bio shots, which you know those are those are the shots you would be giving up if you went to the switching or if you went to that. So uh, I think it just puts more pressure on your offense to be more efficient. Why do you guys only take thirty two threes? Because forty three. Because they switched and they didn't double as much, and uh, they were a little bit later on their their shift activity. Is that is something in game three you're going to have to adjust to take more threes? Um, I mean, it depends. It depends on how they're playing on the offensive end. It depends on what the matchups are. But like I said, we've, I know that's the thing. We've been built on taking what the defense gives us and being able to win in different ways. And so over the course of the season, winning the shot margin um, the way that we did from the free throw line and, and more offensive rebounds and less turnovers, like that's a recipe for you know, long-term success. So I think that's the balance of uh, you know, finding where you can get better, but also not overreacting because if you do that, it opens up more uh, to what they're capable of. Uh, so, you know, you have to fight for that balance. The fourth quarter, it seemed like you guys weren't able to kind of get a, a stop when you needed one down the stretch there. Um, what happened there? Like I said, yeah, they played with pace um, and they were, you know, making shots. Guys that we want shooting the ball was hitting them. Um, and, you know, we seemed to couldn't get them to miss. Um, we thought they were decent closeouts, but you no know, credit to those guys. They came out and they played fast, they played hard, and they had a record-breaking night. Jalen, last, last year they had a few games where a bunch of guys that we might term as non-shooters had outlier shooting nights, and they shot better than 50%, 50% or better a few times last year, and they did it again tonight. What is it about this team being able to hit so many three-pointers against you guys? I think they're well-coached. I mean, I think that's credit to the coaching staff and organization. They put together a, gate, a good game plan for them, and they, they feel confident, and they come out and execute it. I think that's what, you know, they do, you know. Um, and tonight was an example of that, you know. Um, I just thought they made, you know, a lot of shots that we normally will feel comfortable with, but it's the playoffs. It is what it is. You got to adjust, and we got to play ball. Um, so we got to respond. Joe has talked about not letting the team get comfortable. You had that little bit, like five, six minutes at the end of the game, at the end of the uh, first game, where they started to hit some shots and never really threatened there. But do you think there might be some level of them getting comfortable there and carrying that over to this game? Every game is a new game, um, and that's uh, all we can afford to think about. You know, my thought process is on game three. Um, game one and two is over now. Jalen. KP in the post, that's been like your safety valve for your offense. It's been something you guys can kind of steady things with. And they did all sorts of things with their personnel, with their angling to try to disrupt those catches. So what do you think they did so well? And how did that disrupt the harmony of your offense? Uh, they're, they're physical. You know, uh, they, they make it tough uh, um, and stuff like that. They want to push catches out, you know, especially if the, the whistle is in their favor. They, you know, they, they, they thrive themselves on. I'm trying to make everything tough. So we just got to fight for our space. And we got to be just as physical and look forward to it. Own our space, catch the ball with physicality. Don't look for the rep to make a call and embrace it. You know, I think that it's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. You got to just embrace it. And I don't think we did. I think they embraced it a little bit more than we did tonight. Do you react in game three to them hitting a lot of threes? Do you kind of expect that the numbers will even out. I mean, how do you respond when they're shooting 56% from three? I mean, I think we stay solid. I think we stay solid, stick to the game plan, uh, whatever the game plan is for next time or for next game. Uh, we know that they're going to be at home, so they're going to have a little bit more juice, but um, I don't think we react at all. I think we stay as even killed as possible. Jason, they were able to get up a lot of threes in this one, and that was their game plan coming in. How, how do you feel like you guys guarded those, and what was the mindset against those? How much do you have to adjust when they are hitting at that rate? Yeah, you got to give them credit. They they shot more threes, and they, they really shot the ball well tonight. Um, for the most part, you know, our effort, 
you know, it wasn't like we weren't playing hard or connected. There were some some missed opportunities, I would say, um, that we wish we could have back. Some some open looks, some transition threes that were just they were just too comfortable. Uh, but you know, tip your hat off to them. They they hit some shots tonight. What stood out about you guys on offense and some of the lows you went through in this one, and you know, what could you have done better on that end? You feel like? Yeah, I feel like uh, a few of the possessions we we didn't get into our actions fast enough. Uh, missed a lot of bunnies, um, a lot of open threes, and uh, we weren't getting out in transition enough because we didn't get enough stops. Obviously, because they was hitting shots. Jason, how do you look at this moment in the series? Uh, tied a game of peace going to, to Miami. Do you see your team facing some adversity at this point? Is this just kind of how series go? How do you evaluate it? Uh, I mean, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. That's a lot of history between these two franchises, especially recently. Uh, regardless of seeding or who's in or who's out, uh, it's the playoffs. And especially with that team, you know, it's never going to go how people expect it to go. Um, that's the beauty of being in the playoffs and playing at the highest level. Uh, it's part of it. You know, we lost the game and we got a chance to to play again on Saturday. So uh, it should be another fun one. Do you feel like you gave them some life tonight and that they were, you know, undermanned here on the road and did they maybe get a little life coming out of this game? Uh, I, I wouldn't phrase it like that. They're, that's a good team, right? Uh, you know, they kind of like us. They don't. It's not supposed to be easy. Uh, it's not an easy road to where both teams are trying to get trying to get to. Uh, some tough competitive basketball, and uh, you know, we knew that they were going to respond and play better from the first game, and they did.